Shall we start? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So today we discuss about first Noether's theorem. That is a famous theorem given by M. E. Noether. Uh, according to this theorem, every symmetry of nature yields a conservation law. Or conversely, every conservation law reveals an underlying symmetry. Every symmetry operation is associated with a conservation law. If some conservation is breaking, there must be a symmetry breaking. Okay. Uh, what do you mean by symmetry? You know that symmetry is an operation when it performs on a system, the system remains invariant. Like uh, addition, subtraction, if we operate a symmetry on a function, uh, it remains invariant. We call that from operation as a symmetry operation. Uh, if suppose fx, if it is symmetry operator on fx, we will get the fx, same fx. Okay. Symmetry. And you know many functions, the symmetry function, uh, the cos x in the region f of minus x if you take and negative then you got uh, if it will be same f of x then i call by definition a symmetry function this operation actually some operation fx give you fx and so every symmetry of, of nature is associated with a conservation law we see conservation of energy this is a symmetry conservation of Linear momentum is just a symmetry, conservation angular momentum is symmetry. If conservation breaks, then must be symmetry breaks, which actually happens in the early time according to Higgs mechanism, how mass is generated because this is associated with one kind of symmetry breaking, which is known as spontaneous symmetry breaking. Due to this breaking, a mass is generated, which is the origin of mass given by or explained by Peter Higgs, Higgs mechanism. So Whenever there is an extra thing, whenever there is a variation, uh, variation of conservation law or violation of conservation law, uh, there must be a symmetry breaking. For simplicity, you can understand um, what do you mean by symmetry breaking. Uh, suppose uh, in a dining table, four people are uh, going to taking their lunch in a hotel, uh, which is a round type of dining table and a waiter put uh, glasses, uh, four glasses like this. Uh, I hear four glasses. So now each one has a uh, choice whether they can take glasses from either left or right, either left or right, either left or right. That is the symmetry. I can take left or right. But once someone take from right, everyone is bound to take from right. That is known as symmetry breaking. A spontaneous symmetry breaking, this same type of phenomena occurs uh, in nature also. When actually mass is generated by X mechanism, there is some kind of symmetry breaking. Um, also, a symmetry function, you know, suppose X square. It is symmetry function or not? Yes, sir. Uh, if you put minus X, then it will be good. So, we actually X x square, you can write x minus 0 whole square, mm. it is a symmetry function. Right. Similarly, x minus 1 whole square, it is a symmetry function or not? x minus 1 whole square. Hello? Symmetry function or not? Am I audible? Yes, sir. Ah, so x minus 0 square, which is x square, is a symmetry function because if you take f minus x, you get same value. What about x minus 1 whole square? It's not a symmetry function. Why? Because it, if you open it, x square plus 2x. X two term x will come. Yes. Hmm. So you can see if you change 0 to 1, then there is a spontaneous symmetry breaking. Not it. So this function is a symmetry function nature, but once its origin becomes 1, it, it is not symmetric. If the 0 is this one, if the 0 is there, so it is not symmetric. That, is, that type of uh, mathematical, you can say also, if uh, origin changes from 0 to 1, then symmetry breaks, which is actually spontaneous symmetry breaking. That type of physics is uh, 
you can see in case of Higgs mechanism. Okay. So now our main aim is to so the M neither theorem that every symmetry of nature yields a conservation law. Okay. Now come to the mechanical conservations. We have actually three types of conservations and they are associated with three types of symmetry. Translation in symmetry property, translation in space, system is invariant under translation in space, then linear momentum is a conserved quantity. If it is invariant in translation in time, then energy is a conserved quantity. If it is invariant under rotation in space, then angular momentum is conserved. Also another type of conservation you know in electrodynamics, gauge transformation, it just gives you charge is conservation. Okay. Symmetry property. Now come to our mechanical properties. Um, what is translation in space? Suppose a system is here at one point. If you translate to take this point, if it is invariant, then we can call the linear momentum remains constant. Okay. Which is also known as homogeneity of space. Homogeneity means um, homogeneous body, you know. A constituent if each part is same, homogeneous. So if it is a, here the same equation, if we translate it to this point, it is same equation of person, then we call the there exists a homogeneity in space. So homogeneity in space gives you conservation of linear momentum. Homogeneity in time gives you conservation of energy. In place of space coordinate, if it is time, then it will be homogeneous energy. And that means <clears throat> isotropy of space, uh, isotropy is associated to rotation, all points look same, means uh, every point looks same in all directions. So if you directional motion, you know that according to isotropy, the uh, looks same in all directions. If you rotate it, that point looks same. That's called isotropy. So if it is of isotropy, then angular momentum is a conserved quantity. How you get, actually we can prove this. Uh, suppose uh, we got equation for Lagrangian, if suppose Labra Lagrangian does not contain time, so if time is cyclic, then Lagrangian does not affect by changing time, so energy is conserved. So energy conservation means our Lagrangian does not contain time. Similarly, for linear momentum, suppose uh, uh, one space coordinate Q1 is cyclic, if Q1 is cyclic, then corresponding momentum P1 is a conserved quantity, which also we see in case of cyclic net. Similarly, here if the angle is cyclic, then angular momentum is conserved quantity. Okay, we prove that according to our syllabus. So conservation theorems and uh, oh, theorems are e. conservation theorems and symmetry properties. So conservation of linear momentum. First to prove that. If a coordinate corresponds to displacement is cyclic, so uh, because linear momentum is associated with space, homogeneity in space, suppose there is a displacement, so if the coordinate corresponding to displacement is cyclic, a coordinate QJ is cyclic, corresponding to displacement, then the description of the system motion remains invariant under such translation and the linear momentum is conserved. Okay. Let us consider this type of figure. Suppose Ri is our initial coordinate, function of Qj, Qj generalized coordinate, it's slightly displaced to this position. So that change will be Dri, it is a dqj and n cap. dqj is color part, n cap is the vector part in this direction. So Dri is equal to dqj n cap. Okay. So Dri by dqj is nothing but n cap. If Dri is dqj, Dri by dqj is equal to n cap. We can say this from this equation. Now come to our equation of motion. We know that from Lagrange's equation, d by dt, del L by del qj dot minus del L by del qj is equal to zero. Okay. Hello. Ha, hello. Hello. Ha. Uh, am I audible, sir? Yes, yes, you are audible. Uh, sir, it is co chapter, sir. Is it your uh, zero zero six unit one? Sir, it is uh, starting is in a corner. It's already your 002 paper is completed and is MPS 006 classical mechanics 2 part. You have written in your timetable that it is uh, uh, one is already completed actually it is two part 006 uh, MPS 006 classical mechanics 2. Uh, okay. 
ओके सर कह रहे हैं ओके कैन आई प्रोसीड यस सर सर ओके सो दिस इज योर लैग्रेंज इक्वेशन वी डिस्कस इन द लास्ट क्लास ओके सो अकॉर्डिंग टू द इक्वेशन d by dt ऑफ डेल l by del qj डॉट इज इक्वल टू डेल l by del qj व्हाट l इज इक्वल टू t minus v सो पुटिंग दिस वी कैन गेट डेल t by del qj डॉट माइनस डेल v by del qj डॉट But potential is a function of only pot coordinates, so del by del q is zero. So del l by del q is zero, nothing. Del t by del q is dot, which is our p j. Similarly, del l by del q is if you open it, it will get t minus b. And kinetic energy only contain velocity, so coordinate derivative is zero. Del v by del q is or which is q is generalized force. So from this equation we got P J dot is equal to Q J. But by definition Q J is equal to F I dot del R I by del Q J. But here we got del R I by del Q J is equal to N cap. So putting that we got Q J is equal to sum over I F I dot N cap. Sum over I F I is total force on the system F dot N cap. The component of force along the direction of motion or along the direction of translation. Okay. Again, so P J del T by del Q J dot kinetic energy half m i r i dot square plus I particle for total system is equal to sum over I half m i r i dot square. So taking its derivative, we got this this into del R chain rule, putting chain rule del R i dot into del R i dot by del Q J dot. But del R i dot by del Q J dot is same as del R i by del Q J. It del R i by del T. This is del Q J by del T. So it can equal to del R i by del Q J. But we already know that del R I by del Q J is equal to n cap. So this quantity is n cap, and m m m R I dot means R I is equal to P I. So it is sum over I P I dot n cap. Sum over I P I is equal to P. So P J is equal to P dot n cap. But we have the equation P J dot is equal to Q J. That means F is equal to P J dot. So P J is the component of linear moment. When F is zero, P J is a conserved quantity. Only constant. Thus, a given component of total applied for vanishes, then a corresponding component of linear momentum is conserved. This is conservation of linear momentum. Since QJ is cyclic coordinate, it would not appear in the Lagrangian. The cell will remain unaffected by the translation dQJ of the system. So, if QJ is cyclic, it does not appear in the Lagrangian, and varying dQJ, the system is unaffected. That means the motion remains invariant under such coordinate translation, and hence linear momentum is a conserved quantity. Okay, then conservation angular momentum in the similar way you can prove here your angle is rotation. Suppose it is theta, then you know, R I is our coordinate. We rotate it slightly so so that our change is d R I and uh, resultant is R I Q J plus d Q J. From this uh, this you can say this is our change and this change is d Q Y. So here you can write d r i is equal to nothing but it is just arc length. Arc length is the p a into d q i. Okay, so it is the same the p a into d q i. I mean this is the n cap. Then we can say p a is equal to this one r i. So it will be r i sine theta. This angle theta d q or n cap cross r i d q j. So del R I by del Q J is equal to n cap plus R I. 
what is linear moment of place del r i del q j is n cap but here del r i del q j is equal to n cap cross r i this is the only difference other things are nearly same so if the rotation is cyclic then the displacement corresponding of motion of the system remains invariant uh, under such a corner rotation and angular moment is a conserved quantity okay we proceed in a similar fashion but here only difference is d r i is n cap cross r i into d q j in that case it is only n cap d q j so d r i by d q j is equal to n cap cross r i okay so q j now we will not be defined phi dot del r i del q j or del r i del q j is equal to n cap cross r i uh, here we slightly rearrange this and I use the formula you know a dot v cross c is equal to v dot c cross a so i can write like a dot v cross c is equal to v dot c cross a v dot means n cap dot r cross f l i use this formula uh, so i got this and r cross f is a torque so it is n cap dot torque component torque along the axis of rotation similarly this term pj what we got is a, this term del r i by del q j dot but del r i dot by del q j dot is equal to del r i by del q j like previous case but here del r i by del q j is equal to n cross r i put that vi in cross r i you can use the vector identity a dot v cross c is equal to v dot c cross a we got this r cross v is equal to l so it is nothing but angular momentum n dot l so if so we got that if uh, this torque is zero then angular momentum is a conserved quantity which implies that in absence of the component of torque Along any axis, the component of angular momentum is a conserved quantity, which is a conservation of angular momentum. That means if the rotation component QJ is cyclic, then QJ, which is the component of applied torque along the axis rotation, vanishes, and the component of angular momentum along the axis rotation becomes constant. All spherical symmetric problem, angular momentum is a conserved quantity. We will discuss that. The next third one is a conservation of energy. For conservation of energy, condition is uh, its force should be conservative force. A force derived from a potential and potential is a function of position component only that is F is equal to negative gradient of potential minus del Vr for a conservative force. So now for this Lagrangian, you know that Lagrangian is a function of uh, position component, velocity component time, Qj, Qj dot and T. And so it will be, so now take del L by del T. What is the whole? You know that if it is a function for f is equal to x, y, z. Huh. Now del f by del t another parameter or del x. What is del f by del x into dx, del f by del y into dy, del f by del z into dz. It will be del f by df. Del f df by dt and del f by del x into dx by dt, del f by del y into dy by dt, del f by del z into dz by dt. Similarly, here you can write dl by dt. Okay. dl by dt is equal to since there are n number of qj coordinate and n number of qj dot coordinates, we take your sum from 1 to n, del l by del qj into dqj by dt, del l by del qj dot into dqj dot by dt, and only time component del l by del t into dt by dt, dt by dt 1, so I only write del l by del t. Now dl by dt becomes del l by del qj, dqj by dt is qj dot, del l by del qj dot and dqj dot dt by dt not del l by del t i use lagrange equation but from lagrange equation we know that del l by del qj is equal to d by dt del l by del qj dot uh, here there is a term del l by del qj so uh, here i put this d by dt del l by del qj so here d by dt del l by del qj dot into qj dot plus del l by del qj dot into d by dt of qj dot I mean derivative of u into v plus u into derivative of v. That means derivative of u plus v. But derivative of u into v, u derivative of derivative of u plus v. And we have this like form derivative of del L by del q j dot. If we put that, that is some sum of j. into qj dot plus 
डेल एल बाई डेल क्यू जे डॉट इंटू डी क्यू जे डॉट वाई डी टी वट आई कैन राइट डेरीवेटिव ऑफ यू इंटू वी प्लस यू इंटू डेरीवेटिव ऑफ वी तो इट इज नथिंग बट डेरीवेटिव ऑफ यू इंटू वी डेरीवेटिव ऑफ प्रोडक्ट ऑफ डेल एल बाय डेल क्यू जे डॉट इंटू क्यू जे डॉट ओके और डेल एल बाय डेल क्यू जे डॉट इज पी जे we know that so del l by del q j dot into q j dot again we know that del l by del q j dot is nothing but p j so it will be p j q j dot minus l so we got this equation from the object p j q j dot minus l ha ah, if uh, is equal to minus del l by del d here if l does not contain time explicitly if time is cyclic lagrangian does not contain time explicitly or del l by del d is equal to zero and this d by dt of this quantity become zero so this quantity is a constant j and uh, for particular case we if we take uh, consider our lagrangian and uh, qj qj are generalized coordinate and momentum actual j is no, uh, nothing but your hamiltonian it's okay so if all qj j are properly replaced by pj one condition is if all the qj dot are replaced by pj because hamiltonian is a function of qj pj dot qj pj t where the lagrangian is a function of qj qj dot t so there is no qj dot in hamiltonian similarly there is no pj in lagrangian When you write a Lagrangian, it should be a function of qj qj dot t. When you write a Hamiltonian, it must be a function of qj pj t. Okay. If here all qj dot are replaced by pj, then we call it a Hamiltonian H. Actually, using Euler's theorem, what you know in your plus two, we can set it to two, and we found qj dot del t by del qj dot is equal to two t. If t is a quadratic homogeneous quadratic function uh, of q j dot, then del t by del q j is equal to two, and this term is equal to t according to Euler's theorem. Okay, we written here. If you remember in the plus two, also there is a theorem, Euler's theorem, uh, on like this. If you using this, so we found, and uh, this is equal here two t. So putting that, our h is equal to two t minus l. Or two t minus t plus p. That is Hamiltonian is the total energy. For a conservative system, Hamiltonian is equal to total energy. It is um, okay. We use it generally in our uh, most of the cases. We use this condition. Conservative nature also quantum mechanics. You take h is equal to e conservative system. So that is psi is equal to e psi or squared in your equation. Okay. For a conservation system. Hamiltonian is equal to total energy and it is T plus V. And Lagrangian is equal to T minus V. That is the basic difference. And another thing is we can calculate Hamiltonian from Lagrangian is given using this formula. H is equal to sum over P J Q J dot minus L. Okay. So H is equal to sum over J number of generalized coordinate. P J Q J dot minus L. But we replace all the Q J dots through P J. H is a function of Q J P J T. There is no Q J dot. Okay. So this is your uh, conservation of energy. Clear? Now go to this slide. So basically, the Hamiltonian, what we know, very important with the Hamiltonian equation, we got Hamiltonian is equal to sum over j p j q j dot minus l. Clear? Or any doubt? Hello? No sir. Okay. 
so this is a really important equation because uh, our this paper mainly basing on hamiltonian dynamics or hamiltonian formulation so this is the starting equation what is hamiltonian hamiltonian is related to lagrangian by this equation an important thing is hamiltonian is a function of qj pj t or lagrangian qj qj dot t during calculation of hamiltonian from lagrangian all qj dot must be replaced by qj pj t so there should not be any qj dot in inside the hamiltonian okay now h is a function of qj pj t so what is the dh like f is a function of x y z d f is equal to uh, del f by del x into d x del f by del y d into y plus del f by del z d z similarly is a function of q j p j t we can write del f by del q j and d q j del f by del p j into d p j since here uh, there are n number of j coordinates so it takes some number j and del f by del t into d t but h is equal to summation of p j q j dot minus l so according to this definition what is d h d h will be summed over j d p j into q j dot plus p j into d q j dot and for l summed over j del l by del q j into d q j and l is a function of uh, forget to written here q j you know here written eh? l is a function of q j q j dot t so since l is a function of q j q j dot t the derivative d l Will be equal to del l by del z dq z del l by del z dq z or l by del t dt. But p j is equal to del l by del q z dot. We know already this relation. P j is equal to del l by del q z dot. And put p j in place of del l by del q z dot. P j so what you got? P j dq z dot. So plus p j dq z dot and minus p j dq z dot cancel. This term cancel. So what we have? We have the term d p j q j dot minus del l by del q j d q j dot d q j minus del l by del t d t. We have only these three terms. Now Lagrange's equation, we know d by d t del l by del q j dot is equal to del l by del q j. So del l by in place of del l by del q j, we write del l by del q j d by d t of del l by del q j dot. Uh, okay. But d by d t of del l by del q j dot. Del L by del Q J dot again is equal to P J. Using this, we found that D term is P J dot. So here put P J dot in place of this. So we got Q J dot D P J minus P J dot D Q J minus Del L by Del T. Compare this with this equation. One and three. Compare here. See, uh, this sum of J, sum of J, both are cancel. Del L by Del Q J into D Q J. Here, d q j is multiplied with minus p j dot. So what we got? One, we got an equation p j dot is equal to minus how much? p j dot is equal to minus del s by del q j. Similarly, comparing co comparing the coefficients, we got here q j dot coefficient d p j. Here, del s by del q j is d p j. So q j dot is equal to del s by del p j. These are known as the Hamilton's equation of motion. P j dot is equal to del s by del p j. Q j dot del s by del p j. Also, here we got del s by del t is equal to minus del l by del t. Third equation. So these are the Hamilton's equation of motion: q j dot del s by del p j dot and p j dot minus del s by del q j. This is a canonical equation of motion because q j and p j form a canonical coordinates. And the anti contents to a number of first order equation. Here, f number or n number of first order equation, number of degree of freedom. Here also, f is number of degree of freedom. Um, that was number of equations. So a plus a two a number of first order equations. These are the Hamilton's equation of motion. Okay. Then we go to the next one. Hamilton equation of motion. Ah, uh, we use a one term Poisson bracket. Actually, checking the equation is canonical or not. We use this Poisson bracket. 
by definition poisson bracket is written in let's say square bracket sometimes it is also written in some curly bracket but there are written that poisson bracket in form otherwise in general if nothing is written it is written in the square bracket square bracket uv if you calculate the poisson bracket of uv generally we have take our coordinate qj and pj canonical coordinates the formula is summed over j del u by del qj into del v by del pj minus del u by del qj and del u by del pj into del v by del qj so if our u and v then del u by del qj del v by del pj and del u by del pj and del v by del pj if we have only one coordinate qp generally so it will be del u by del q into del v by del p minus del u by del p del v by del p which was appears first that is del u by del q into del v by second p and minus del u by del p del v by del q clear and for canonical conjugate or if transform canonical qj pj poisson bracket is one if you take u qj v pj obviously it will be one if it is qj it qj is one pj pj one And Qj Pj zero, Qj Pj zero should cancel. So for canonical conjugate, if Qj Pj are canonical conjugate, then this Poisson bracket will be one. Obviously, Qy Pj will be delta Ij. Now we have to take a problem. We also dis uh, elaborately discuss it in the next class about Poisson bracket. Uh, today we do some problems on Poisson bracket. Let's say we have a problem. Calculate the Poisson bracket of R mod and P mod. Okay. डेल del pj and pj dot is equal to minus del h by del qj okay if any set of variables any qj pj suppose if you have a, a is equal to del h by del b and b is equal to minus del h by del a then a b are called canonical conjugate for that reason it is known as canonical equation of hamiltonian if the coordinates at pair of variables satisfies this kind of equations then we call it is a canonical pair of variables and only canonical pair of variables obey your uncertainty relation in quantum mechanics so qp is a pair of variables uh, and then uh, angle and uh, uh, angular momentum is a pair of variables energy and time is a canonical pair of variables other thing is mathematically we can check its poisson bracket will be one okay if you take any set another capital q capital b If uh, question will ask, check it is a canonical transformation or not. We have to check its Poisson bracket is one. Then it will be canonical set of variables. Okay. Okay. There is a canonical transformation section. We discuss that in that unit. What is actually canonical means? Sir, sir, is this term was used in quantum? No. Uh, yes, sir. Yes, quantum. Uh, during uncertainty uh, principle. Yes, all uh, canonical variables will be uncertainty principle. Uh huh. Thank you, sir. Q P, not a Q P. Yeah, E T. They are canonical variables. Here also, what you know, your Poisson bracket. This in quantum mechanics, it is called your uh, what bracket? To calculate uh, the bracket is called commutator. So in commutator, in quantum mechanics, this Poisson bracket is known as commutator. Okay. We only multiply i h cross with it, and commutator is equal to i h cross into Poisson bracket. So here Q P uh, Poisson bracket is one. In quantum mechanics, you see the commutator of Q and P is equal to i h cross. So since uh, we know h cross is the uh, uh, h cross actually identified the quantum mechanics identity of uh, quantum mechanics. Uh, so we found it in uh, only quantum mechanics. Uh, If you multiply that i h cross with this Poisson bracket, we get the commutator relation. Okay, in the syllabus also written that uh, the uh, relation with quantum mechanics. If you see our syllabus, that is the uh, commutator. Oh. Now, now do this problem. I calculate the Poisson bracket of this R mod and P mod. That R is the position vector. We know that position vector is equal to 
xi cap yj cap zk cap so r mod will be x square plus y square plus z square to the power half and p mod will be p x square plus p x square plus z square to the power half if you calculate the r mod p mod uh, poison bracket then it, how many variables are here three variables x y z so it's uh, sum of j is equal to 1 to 3 okay one with respect to x y z so we calculate like this x del r by del x del p by del p x into p x x del r by del y del p del y into del r by del p and del p del y del r by del x into del p z del p del z p z into del so it is del z okay okay so what will your value if you check del r by del x is equal to if you take r is given here you taking the derivative in the chain rule we found it will be x by mod r and similarly it will be p x by mod p all terms, second term is y plus r, p by z plus r, p z by p. If you add this x, p x, y, p y, z, p z by r mod p mod. r dot p by r mod p mod. So obviously it is r cap p cap. So value will be r cap p cap. Clear? Or any doubt? It is very important problem. Hello? Yes, sir. Ah. Yes, sir. Then another problem here uh, find the value of alpha if q is equal to q plus 4 alpha p and v is equal to q plus 2 p are canonical conjugate. Canonical conjugate means its poison bracket must be 1. So u v poison bracket will be 1. By definition, poison bracket means del u by one variable, q one q and 1 p. So there is no summation. I like del u by del q into del v by del p minus del u by del p into del v by del q. And take its derivative, you found del 1 del v by del p 2 minus 4 alpha and 1 is equal to 1. That means minus 4 alpha is equal to minus 1. Alpha is equal to 1 by 4. Okay. Another important question is if p q and small p capital P are two pair of canonical variables and then for transformation, uh, is canonical find the value of alpha and beta again this transformation is canonical means in the new variable q capital q capital p must be satisfied uh, the poison bracket rule that is poison bracket of q capital q and capital p must be equal to one this is the condition for canonical transformation if we get a new variable by uh, canonical transformation a new variable also satisfies this poison equation or you can say poison bracket q capital q capital p poison bracket must be one so capital q capital p are given you the formula del q by del q into del p by del p and capital q by del small p del capital p by del small q is equal to one and take its derivative you found this and that the cos square which is sin square beta p is one so alpha beta q2 alpha minus one is equal to one so you know here here one means q to the power zero for comparing this you can say 2 alpha minus 1 is equal to 0 so alpha will be half and alpha beta is equal to 1 so beta will be 2 okay okay so since there is no power of q power must be equal here power of q is equal to 2 alpha minus 1 there is no power means 0 so 2 alpha minus 1 must be equal to 0 where you get alpha is equal to half again alpha if it is equal to 1 alpha beta is equal to 1 so beta will be 2 for alpha beta is equal to 1 Okay. It is another problem. Uh, we check whether it is a canonical or not. So two are given, which one is canonical? That means uh, q1, p1, if will be poison bracket will be one, then it will be canonical. Or if q2, p2, p2 poison bracket will be one, then it will be canonical. If you check uh, when you check q1, p1, you see they not equal to one. So it is not canonical, but for q2, q2, it is canonical. Now this Hamiltonian formulation uh, is uh, actually calculated or useful in phase space. Because we use uh, Hamiltonian as a function of q, p and t. p uh, is momentum component. So in phase space, we give equal priority to position and momentum. So, 
for an particular system there are three n positional coordinates and three n momentum coordinates uh three means x y z three uh, for one particular x y z positional coordinate p x p y p z three momentum coordinates see so particular when there are three n positional coordinates and three n momentum coordinates so phase space is a six n dimensional space where <coughs> particle contributes one dimension for each position component and one dimension for each momentum component so 6n but in configuration space which we already does in lagrange formula it is a 3n dimensional space here only position component so since energy is kinetic energy p square by 2m we know that so if you know the q and p we know the exact path of motion so in phase space the path is the exact path of motion and only one path is possible between two points but in configuration sense there are number of paths and for exact paths they obey hamilton's principle so these are the difference And comes to legendary transformation and Hamilton's equation of motion. Okay. Actually, here we see our Hamiltonian is a function of a Q J P J T. You can write and suppose Q. P T and Lagrangian is a function of Q Q dot T. So what is the difference between these two? Now here Q dot is changing to P. So there is a change in basis or variable, basic variable Q dot is change in P. And we have also a relation between H and A. Hamiltonian is equal to you see summed over. But uh, keep one variable only. P Q dot minus L. That is product of those two variables which are changing. Actually, this type of transformation is known as Legendre transformation. We actually change basis, Lagrangian basis to Hamiltonian basis. Q Q dot to Q P. And uh, the H and L are related by H equal to L into product of those variables. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> this type of relation also you see in your thermodynamics. There are many relations between different variables. U, S, T, P. They are related like this. Okay. And let us uh, generalize it. Uh, uh, consider a function of x, y. And let A be a function of x, y. And D, F is obviously del by del x into D, X. Plus del by del y into dy. Let take is a u. U dx plus v dy. Okay. So u will del by del x and v will del by del y. Let take another function g, which is f x y minus u x. Like this, the product of one variable of here and another new variable is. So what is this g? Differentiate you got df minus d u x and u dx plus v dy. Here you minus u dx minus x dy. Plus u dx minus cancel only v du y minus x du. That is a function of u and y. Here it is a function of x and y. We got a function of u and y. So what is change? Actually, x change to u. So relation will be g is equal to f minus x into u. Like this. See, if q dot is changing p, so h is equal to and minus an extra. A plus minus L is equal to minus P Q. And this type of transformation is known as Legendre transformation, G U Y. So we going from Lagrangian formula to Hamiltonian formula, we have a similar kind of situation. And the procedure is actually first given by Legendre and known as Legendre transformation. In Legendre transformation, we change a basis and uh, the function becomes the new function will be. Old function minus the product of two variable which actually changing. So now check the Lagrangian equation. We have L Q Q dot T. 
so dl will be del by del qj del by qj dot and use pj is equal to del by del qj <coughs> again from lagrange equation pj dot is equal to del by del qj using these two we found dl is equal to pj dot dqj pj dot dqj dot del by del t but hamiltonian is pj qj dot minus l okay dh will be this and comparing this we got the hamiltonian equation of motion we already discussed it in the last slides this equation of canonical hamilton equation okay next question is so that if a coordinate is cyclic in lagrangian then it must be absent in hamiltonian if a cyclic mean does not appear in lagrangian it also doesn't appear in hamiltonian i suppose uh, consider qj is a cyclic coordinate that means qj and does not appear in lagrangian del l by del qj is equal to zero or p del l by del qj is equal to pj dot but we know from lagrange equation here del l by del qj is equal to pj dot so pj dot will be zero or pj is equal to constant obviously okay but from hamiltonian equation of motion we know that pj dot is equal to minus del s by del qj you have to remember this two equations here pj dot is equal to minus del s by del qj so pj dot zero means del s by del s qj is equal to zero del s by del qj zero means qj which is cyclic is absent okay uh, this is uh, any function uh, suppose l h and d h by do no let u is any function then what is du by dt i sum do any function of qj pj t del by del qj qj dot del by del pj pj dot or del by del t so if you use the hamilton equations qj dot is equal to del h by del pj and pj dot is equal to minus del h by del pj we got this and this is nothing but the poisson bracket if you see this two term to see del u by del qj into del h by del pj minus del u by del pj and del h by del qj it is poisson bracket of u and h so total time derivative of any function of qj pj t can be written as poisson bracket of u s that function with hamiltonian plus del u by del t if it does not contain time explicitly then it will only equal to poisson bracket of u s so from this equation you can let suppose qj let u is equal to q qj so what will be u it will be del qj by del t which qj dot it is equal to qj h plus del qj by del t again is zero so qj h we got the qj h i mean if you calculate qj h poisson bracket it will be del qj by qj del h by pj to take the one so it will be only del h by del pj this term will be zero okay so del u by del t is du by dt minus u s from this equation you can write this or del s by del t what is the value if you take h then h as poisson bracket is zero del u by del t is equal to del u by del du by dt okay if hamiltonian does not contain time explicitly then d h by dt is zero uh, or d u by dt with zero if u is a constant of motion if u is a constant of motion d u by dt is equal to zero if a constant d u by dt is zero so this term will be zero means u h is equal to minus del u by del t or del u by del t is equal to poisson bracket of h and u sometimes it acts so that this is a constant of motion so you have to calculate this poisson bracket with h if h is zero then u is constant of h u okay del u by del t but zero will con constant of motion from this equation you can write qi dot is equal to poisson bracket of qi h pi dot is equal to poisson bracket of pi h oh so these are the hamilton equation of motion qi dot del h by del qj dot del h by del pj pj dot minus del h by del qj and del h by del t is equal to minus del h by del t if you take poisson bracket qj h you got del qj dot and pj h pj my pj dot this is the hamilton equation of motion in terms of poisson bracket in lagrangian formulation non cyclic coordinates 
that is, you have to solve the non-cyclic coordinates which are actually uh, appear in the Lagrangian. But for the Hamiltonian formulation, cyclic coordinates give you easy solution because if it's cyclic, then it will be QJ cyclic. Then corresponding momentum is a constant quantity. And we easily get the equation of motion. Okay. So, viewing these two things, actually Rauch uh, developed a procedure which is known as Rauch procedure for solving mechanical problem. Any doubt? Hello? Yes. Please ask if any doubt. No, sir. Okay. Uh, we go for route procedure. Sir? Uh -huh. Sir, uh, sir, I only hear Lagrangian or Hamilton conversion now. Uh, we do a thorough formula of radical equity. The Hamiltonian the example Lagrangian conversion. Sound over PJQZ minus L? Problem. Solve the case with this. problem problem. Then go to route procedure. Route procedure actually use both the concept, both cyclic component and non-cyclic component. For cyclic component, you use the Hamiltonian formula formality. For non-cyclic component, it the Lagrangian formality. The Hamiltonian procedure is actually adapted to the treatment of problems involving cyclic component. So, this advantage of Hamiltonian formulation in managing cyclic component may be combined with Lagrangian formulation of non-cyclic component like the method of Rauch. Like here we carry out a mathematical transformation from a basis QJ, QJ dot to QJP only for those components that are cyclic. So this is Hamiltonian form. Hamiltonian only QP. So which component are cyclic for them? We only convert to Z dot to P. And obtain their equation of motion in the Hamiltonian form. That means their P will be constant. The remaining components are governed by the Lagrange's equation. So if cyclic, let us consider if the cyclic components are QS plus one, Q comma QS plus two up to QN, then a new function R known as Routhian can be defined if r is a function of q1 to qs non cyclic for cyclic it will be replaced by momentum ps plus 1 ps plus 2 pn and t okay. which is basically nothing but a form found over pj qj dot minus l pj qj dot only for cyclic coordinate Found over PJ QJ dot, but for all coordinates, all cyclic coordinates. But Lagrangian is a function of all coordinates. Lagrangian is a function of all coordinates, but here summation is over only cyclic coordinate. Okay, for that is in S plus 1 to N. Only cyclic coordinate we convert to Hamiltonian, other coordinates are remain as Lagrangian. The cyclic coordinate, uh, or you can write this sum of s plus 1 j s plus 1 to m pj qj dot minus l cyclic. This is actually this gives you Hamiltonian and this is l non cyclic. Non cyclic as if I mean Lagrangian. Okay, so s cyclic l non cyclic minus l. This is the Rauchian. s cyclic minus l non cyclic. So you put the differential dr. You found like this sum of j is plus 1, pj dqj dot, uh, qj dot dpj, and for Lagrangian, if you take, you get this term, pj qj dot t. So dr will be, if you take sum over s1, pj dqj, qjp, this is for Hamiltonian part. Here, 1 to s, s plus 1 to n. 1 to s, s plus 1 to n. So s plus 1 to n, I separate. Only remaining term are 1 to s. For a s number of non cyclic coordinates, the equation of motion is given by Lagrange's equation 
with R as the Lagrangian. For this S coordinate, which are non cyclic, for them we use the Lagrangian equation, but Lagrange, in place of Lagrangian, we have to write the Raoultian R. D by dt of del R by del Q j dot minus del R by del Q j is equal to 0. For n minus a cyclic coordinate, the equation of motion given by Hamiltonian equation of motion with R as the Hamiltonian. This Raoultian, it will be treated as Lagrangian for non cyclic coordinates and uh, we use Lagrange equation of motion for solving it. And for uh, cyclic coordinate, we take R as the Hamiltonian and use Hamilton's equation of motion for getting the solutions. Okay. So on, uh, let us see an example. Example is your Kepler's problem, what we have already done. Uh, a single particle is moving in a plane under the influence of inverse square law of force. That is force, uh, we take the potential is minus k by r. So, actually Lagrangian will be t minus b and kinetic energy will be how much? Half m r dot square plus r square theta dot square uh, plus and it is minus minus plus k r. So, here which coordinate is cyclic? You see theta is absent here, so theta is a cyclic coordinate. So, but another coordinate r. Here a L should be function of theta, theta dot and t. R, R, another one R. There are two points, q1 theta, q1 dot theta dot, q2 R and q2 R dot and t. But see, in the expression, uh, theta is absent, r dot present, theta dot present, the r present, but theta is absent. So, theta is cyclic coordinate, for theta coordinate we use the Routhian part, or uh, Hamilton, the Routhian for this process is p theta theta dot minus l. Which one cyclic? Uh, the theta is cyclic, so it will be p theta theta dot minus L, L is whole, here a non-cyclic, cyclic, means L theta part and L R part, P theta theta dot minus L theta part will give you Hamiltonian theta and minus Lagrangian in R, okay, now put the R, we have this expression, for non-cyclic coordinate, the equation of motion will be T by dt of del capital L by del R dot minus del R by del, del R, so here in place of L, we have to write R, so from this we got an equation, M R double dot is zero. Ah, okay. And for theta equation we have for theta we use the Hamiltonian formulation and taking R as the Hamiltonian. That means P theta equal to del H by del theta dot here, P theta equal to del R by del theta dot. Ah. So P theta is equal to minus del R by del theta dot. Ah. What do you written? P theta dot. Mm. What are the equation? Wrong written. Right? Equation are Q j dot is equal to del R by del P j and P j dot is equal to minus del R by del P j. But theta dot is equal to del R by del P theta mm. and P theta dot minus del R by del theta. I have wrong written. It is theta dot. Theta dot is equal to del R by del P theta and P theta dot minus del R by del theta. Okay. But uh, Theta is cyclic. So this term will be 0, that means P theta is equal to constant. And theta dot is equal to del R by del P theta. Here it is. So P theta is equal to del L by del theta dot. If you calculate P theta uh, from Lagrangian formulation, we know that P theta is equal to del L by del theta dot. P j is equal to del L by del Q j dot is a definite. Actually, A mass square theta dot. Here we got P theta is a constant. So, A mass square theta dot is a constant. This is your angular mode of J. And Routhian becomes P theta theta dot minus half M square in place of uh, theta dot square. We put P R by M R 
12 and half m to square k r so we finally got this equation uh, or this Rauthian form okay from in this way you can solve the Rauthian to get the equation of motion for non cyclic part we use uh, Lagrangian formulation and for uh, cyclic part you use uh, Hamiltonian formulation here smaller is the uh, non cyclic part and uh, Lagrangian formula is followed and uh, small theta is equal to cyclic part and Hamiltonian formulation is followed. Okay. The next one derivation of Hamilton's equation from a variational principle. <laughs> Okay. Okay, we next go for derivation of Hamilton's equation from variational principle. Derivation of Hamilton's equation from a variational principle. Uh, in paper 2 or first classical mechanics, we already discuss about variational principle and Hamilton's uh, principle. Hamilton's principle is a variational principle. Where we got the Hamilton's principle, we have that the for exact path of motion, the integral uh, is stationary. That means its variation will be zero. If integration of velocity is stationary constant, then the variation will be zero. But we know that here the Lagrangian contains Hamiltonian itself that is because H is a sum of Pj Qj dot minus L so L is equal to sum over Pj Qj dot minus H so in place of L put this sum over Pj Qj dot minus H uh, using this two in one we can write sum over P, Pj Qj dot minus H dt is equal to zero Again, we know that if delta of f pi y dot x is 0, then it satisfies the equation d by dx del f by del y dot minus del f by del y is equal to 0. Uh, in that class, we also discussed uh, for the exact path of motion, if this variation is 0, then it will be um, satisfy Lagrange's kind of equation, or known as general Euler Lagrange's equation. In the general form, if it is qj, qj dot, we call Euler equation, uh, Lagrange's equation. If it will be in x, y, other variables, we call Euler Lagrange's equation. Okay. So if it will be zero, then it satisfies the Euler Lagrange's equation. Since here it will be zero, means here f is this one, it satisfies Euler Lagrange's equation. Uh, f is this one, uh, that is f is a function q, qj dot, pj t. So d by dt of del f by del qj dot minus del f by del qj is equal to zero. Similarly, for uh, pj coordinate uh, d by dt of del f by del pj dot minus del f by del pj is equal to 0. I calculate this quantity. Uh, del f by del qj dot. But if del f by del qj dot, there is no qj dot in h. So del f by del qj dot is only pj. Del f by del qj dot, uh, del f by del qj. Then there is no qj here. So qj only in h. So del f by del qj is equal to minus del f by del qj. Similarly, del f by del pj dot. Del f by del pj dot. There is no pj dot here or here. H does not pj dot. This term does not pj dot. So del f by del pj dot is equal to 0. And del f by del pj. In both term contains pj. So there are two terms for this. If you take derivative with pj, it will be qj dot. For this, it will be minus del h by del pj. Okay. So now, give these two equations in 5 and 6. We got two equations. A d by dt of pj. For d by dt of pj plus del h by del qj is equal to 0. That means pj dot is equal to minus del h by del qj. And for equation 6, we have d by dt of 0 minus qj plus del h by del pj is 0. That means qj is equal to del h by del pj. So these two are uh, Hamilton's equation of motion. So in this way, you can derive Hamilton's equation of motion from variational principle. Okay. Any doubt? Hello? No, sir. 
ओके कोई प्रोसीड कर द तो पॉइजन रैकेट ओके पॉइजन रैकेट स्लाइड इज विजिबल यस सर यस सर ओके so we discuss the next unit poison bracket we already define it actually the poison bracket of a function u and v of two functions u and v can be written as like this u v q p and del u by del sum over j del u by del q j del u by del p j minus del u by del p j and del v by del q j but if u and v are functions of q and p only one unit is no j then in general formula is del u by del q del u by del p minus del u by del p del u by del q general question acts with one variable what are the properties poisson rocket of two dynamical variable is anti commutative means uh, uh, v u poisson rocket is not equal to u v poisson rocket it is minus of u v poisson rocket so this identity gives you that if you uh, in place of v you take u u u poisson bracket will be equal to minus u u poisson bracket that means if one thing is negative of that this is nothing but zero so poisson bracket of uh, same quantity is equal to zero u u poisson bracket is zero another identity is associative you know u plus v W poison bracket is equal to U W poison bracket plus V W poison bracket. If A and B are constants, then A U B B poison bracket is equal to A B into poison bracket of U B. Another A U B B W poison bracket will be A into U W plus B into V W. A derivative of the poison bracket of U B is equal to del del U by del T. v poisson bracket plus u del v del t poisson bracket these are the fundamental rules of poisson bracket okay uh, then fundamental poisson brackets what do you know if they are both are same coordinate we already see if the same variable is zero so if qj qk same variable q so it will be zero if pj pk same variable zero what if it is equal to qp then it delta jk that is particular qp then one If it reverse P Q, then only minus one, anti-commutative, so minus delta J K or particularly minus one. Okay, these are the relations. And fundamental Poisson bracket are invariant under canonical transformation. Fundamental Poisson bracket, when these rules, these are you can say fundamental Poisson brackets are invariant under canonical transformation. If a transformation is canonical, then this Poisson bracket. Uh, Obey these rules for every canonical transformation. For that reason, we have to check whether the canonical is Q P one. This is to check. If we take canonical transformation Q P to capital Q P, then capital Q P must be one. Now, total time derivative function of a canonical variable. We already checked that d u by d t is equal to. If u is a function of q j p j t, del u by del q j into d p j d t, del u by del p j into d p j d t, or del u by del t, that means this quantity is nothing but Poisson bracket of u s. So d u by d t is equal to u s Poisson bracket of del u by del t. If u is equal to s, then it will be obviously zero. So d s by d t is equal to del s by del t. For a constant of motion, u d u by d t is zero. So u s and del u by del t is equal to s u. If u does not contain time explicitly, then del u by del t zero and d u by d t is equal to u s. You then have this formula. Calculate d u by d t. If it is given in the function does not contain time, then we only calculate its Poisson bracket with s. So for a function does not contain time, its derivative will be equal to Poisson bracket with s. If we constant of motion u s, it will be zero. U s will be zero. Now Q I dot to Q I S P I dot P I S R I dot means R S D R by D R S P dot means P S dot L P by L T. 
since p q are independent of t so it will be zero if t is a function of q i p i and find the position bracket of t and h even if not t t is a time t is any function of q i p i and find the bracket of original dot t and h and according to formula you write this del t by del q i del h by del p i minus del t by del p i del h by del q i okay del t by del q i q i dot or del t by del del h by del p i q i dot del h by del q i p minus p i dot minus minus plus so it will be del t by del q i q i del t del t by del p i del p i del t which actually nothing but d t by d t one ठीक पर इंजन तो नो ये प्रॉब्लम ये बेबी आर कांस्टेंट आर पी जनरल है इन फाइंड ओल्ड लेडी जन तो दिस टाइप ऑफ प्रॉब्लम इफ क्यू इज गोल्ड ए डॉट पी पी इज गोल्ड बी डॉट आर आर कैनोनिकल देन फाइंड द ए डॉट बी बट द वैल्यू ऑफ ए डॉट बी इफ दिस आर कैनोनिकल पॉइजन रॉकेट ली वन फ्रॉम देर पॉइजन रॉकेट वी फाउंड ए डॉट पी मींस डॉट पर एक्स बी एक्स प्लस ए वाई पी इज इट बिजेट बी डॉट आर बी एक्स एक्स बी वाई वाई बिजेट बिजेट तू टेक द पॉइजन रॉकेट ओनली एक्स पी एस पॉइजन रॉकेट इज नॉन जीरो वाई पी वाई इज नॉन जीरो जेड पी जेड इज नॉन जीरो ओके टेकिंग दिस वी गेट दिस माय एक्स बी एक्स पी एक्स इज माइनस वन एक्स पी एक्स इज वन सो पी एक्स इज माइनस वन मिलाली Another thing, Poisson's theorem. The Poisson bracket of any two constant of motion is also a constant of motion. If u u v are constants of motion, that is h of u is equal to Poisson bracket zero, h v Poisson bracket zero, then obviously h Poisson bracket h v Poisson bracket of u v is equal to zero. Okay, this is known as Poisson's theorem. Another one is Jacobi identity. If u v w are two functions of q j q j, and then u into Poisson bracket of v w plus v into Poisson bracket w Poisson bracket plus w into Poisson bracket of u u v is equal to zero. Okay, you can easily check this. This is one kind of assignment. Poisson bracket is in order u v w v w u or w u v. This is actually the identity. Then angular momentum and Poisson bracket, which actually Have a quantum mechanical relation. Okay. In doubt, is another part quantum mechanical relation with what? Hello. Hello. No, no, sir. No doubt. You can continue. So angular momentum, we already know that angular momentum okay. L is equal to R cross P. R is the position vector and P is momentum vector. Uh, so in since cross product, we can calculate it in terms of a determinant and component. Uh, I uh, also R cross P will be I cap into Y P Z minus Z P Y Z cap into Z P X minus X P Z K cap X P Y minus Y P X. Okay. So that is uh, actually this component is in it. Component of x component angular momentum. This is y component angular momentum. This is z component of angular momentum. First, only value is this. Now calculate the Poisson bracket of L x L y. Very easy. In quantum mechanics, we calculate commutator of L x L y. Uh, commutator is I x cross into Poisson bracket. So whatever value we get here, we have to multiply only I x cross to get the quantum mechanical commutation value. So here, uh, if L x L y take its commutator, so actually three variable x y z. Huh. The sum of j is equal one three. The L x y L x z L o t z z. So if you put here x one is x x two y x three z p one p x p two p y p three p z. Put this. Only you see L x L y. You will be found. That L X Y L Y commutator will be zero. All cancel. Uh, here not zero. Sorry, a plus zero. L X L Y L Y L P Z minus L X L X L Y is a formula. Ah, uh, oh, for that we are. 
this equal to um, zero. This quantity zero. Del L by del X, del Y by del Qi. Del L because X does not contain X. L X does not contain X. L X contain Y Z. Similarly, L Y does not contain Y. L Z does not contain Z. So L X X zero. Uh, L X. I'm not it. L X X. L Y P X. L X. Y E. Not X. Why? What is this? This mistake actually. It is L X P X L X X. Well, correct. Okay, del Y Y del P Y del P Y minus Y Z P Z P Z Z. Okay. And del X P X. L X del L X by X zero del L X by del P X zero. L X does not contain X or P X. So first term will be zero. L Y does not contain Y, P Y. Okay. So this term also zero. Y P Y doesn't contain. L Z doesn't contain. L Z there is no only L X. So Z component L X contain. Y P Z Z Q Y L Y also contain X P Z. So with respect to Z, we have some value. Z P X X P Z. Okay. So only Z component exists. Del X by Del Z, Del L by Del P Z, Del X by Del P Z. So Del X by Del Z is equal to minus P Y. Del L Y by P Z minus X. Here del x by del p z minus y del l by del z p x. So we got this value, and we found this will be x by y by x, which will be l z. So l x l y is equal to l z. Commutator of uh, uh, Poisson bracket of l x l y is equal to l z. So commutator will be i x plus l z. Similarly. L Y L X minus so minus L Z, L Y L Z, L X order X Y Z cycling X Y Z if it's the same order then will be positive otherwise negative L X L Y L Z L Y L Z L X L Z L X L Y reverse is minus this is the relation and for quantum mechanics it will multiply the highest cross for combining these six relations we can write L I L Z Poisson bracket will equal to epsilon i j k k. It is a Lebesgue beta symbol, and this epsilon i j k meaning is it will be zero if two indices are same. If i equal j or j equal k or i equal k, if two indices are same, then it will be zero. It will be plus one or even permutation. That means if i j here k, and minus one odd permutation. Suppose j i it will be minus k. It is the permutation order. So it's the general formula in quantum mechanics. In quantum mechanics, commutation bracket or commutator we call it is equivalent to Poisson bracket, and commutator is valued by I x cross into Poisson bracket. So a commutator x by quantum mechanics commutator is equal I x cross into x y into Poisson bracket or classical mechanics. So for L x L y commutator will be I x cross L z, or L i L z commutator will be I x cross epsilon i j k. So in quantum mechanics, we call canonical variable is Poisson bracket one. As in classical mechanics, but in quantum mechanics, we call their canonical variable if their commutator is equal to I x cross. Okay, the relation. Then the system is governed by this Hamiltonian. There are some problems. Uh, Hamiltonian is given for a and b are constant and p x y are moment conjugate to x and y uh, for the value of a and y quantity. Uh, If these quantities are conserved, find the value of a and b. We use the Hamiltonian formulation. If they are conserved, the derivative will be zero. But from formula, we know that derivative of any quantity is equal to Poisson bracket to the x plus del by del t. Since these two terms does not contain t, del by del t is zero. Okay. 
so if f is conserved it's d f by d is zero that means f h is equal to zero so from this you calculate the value of a and b if poison bracket of f h is zero for fastest px minus 3y is f you calculate this equal poison bracket zero which gives you the formula b is equal to three similarly for second taking which is poison bracket zero you got a is equal to you can get the value of a not the end on here okay similarly the hamiltonian of a simple pendulum consisting of mass m attached to a massless uh, spring at length l hamiltonian is given if l with the lagrangian find dl dt okay you have to calculate dl by dt so h is given first problem how you calculate l then you do this uh, we have formula we know that derivative of any quantity is equal to f h the poisson bracket with h plus del f by del t h is given how to calculate l okay since basically it is a conservative system we know um, for a conservative system h is equal to t plus v i know it's, um, it is simple bundle of conservative system so l is equal to t minus v basically if i sign for a conservative system change the sign it will become the lagrangian t plus v minus but for a particular lagrangian at the exact form the lagrangian contain q dot hamilton contain p theta so all p should be replaced by q okay in this way you can calculate this or another way is higher formula you know hamiltonian is equal to ha the screen to the dekha jao ni pdf ta dekha jao ni this one na is no no it's visible you have to go to the top of your is visible visible sir yes yes, yes visible yes sir yes visible okay sonali sir you just uh, scroll it to the top uh, then it will be visible okay for a conservative system you, you can write this like in uh, t minus v but you also replace all p theta by theta please mute someone Unmuted, unmuted. Okay, but when uh, question is asked, find the Lagrangian if Hamiltonian is given, we go from this through this formula. For any problem, maybe conservative, not conservative, we have the formula h is equal to since it is one, one variable theta, a function of only theta, so there is no summation. Formula is p theta theta dot minus l. So l is equal to p theta theta dot minus l. And we know that theta dot is equal to del l by del p theta. So p theta into del l by del theta p theta minus s. Um, put the value p theta and del l by del p theta is equal to from this. Um, we got. Or if you know l, then you can use h. Theta dot is equal to del s by del p theta. Is that it? Since we have written Lagrangian here, we are calculating here. But if Lagrangian is not uh, written, then we can calculate this theta dot in terms of h. H is this. So we have a Hamiltonian equal this theta dot is equal to del h by del p theta. So in place of theta dot, we write del h by del p theta. Same value will come. Where is this? Oh, here you can say. Del s by del p theta minus s. Okay, p theta and put p theta. Uh, so we got the Lagrangian, but for Lagrangian, all p theta should be replaced by theta dot. You calculate the theta dot. Del s by del p theta is equal how much? If you take del s by del p theta, two p theta, two two cancel p theta by m l square. So what is the value of p theta? P theta is equal to ml square theta dot so when you write final lagrangian 
you have to replace p theta by ml square theta dot. Right. I like than this, what is your p theta must be replaced by ml square theta dot. Means it will be how much ml square theta dot theta dot whole square. And so del L by del T is equal to L H M into L H. So del L by del theta into L H by del P theta minus del L by del P theta into L H by del theta. This is the relation. For that thing, I have not explicitly written the Lagrangian because I only want to know the derivative with respect to theta and P theta. Theta dot is not required. So we take the derivative and find the result. But if Lagrangian is generally, if Find the Lagrangian. So, if you this Lagrangian with the formula in place of p theta, you put uh, m l square theta dot means value will be m square l four theta dot square by two m l square or whatever it is here. It will be how much? L square, L square. Uh, so we cancel only two. One M cancel. So it will be half M L square theta dot square. So Lagrangian will be half M L square theta dot square minus M G L one minus cos theta. Okay. So it's the Lagrangian. But here question is to find the DL by DT. So we use this. We don't go for exact Lagrangian. And another question: Lagrangian of a system is given by this. Find the Hamiltonian equation of motion and calculate Poisson bracket of theta theta dot. Okay. So Lagrangian Poisson bracket equation. We know that theta dot is equal to del h by del p theta. P theta dot is equal to minus del h by del theta. H is equal to p theta theta dot minus L. Again, p theta is equal to del L by del theta dot, which is equal to from Lagrangian ML square theta dot. So you are calculate theta dot is equal to p theta by ML square. Put so we got the Hamiltonian. Because if Lagrangian is given, how to calculate Hamiltonian? We write this formula, then we replace all theta dot by p theta. So we have a relation p theta is equal to del L by del theta. So p theta equal to m l square theta dot. From this, you found theta dot is equal to p theta by m l square. So write uh, p theta theta dot p theta into theta dot plus uh, this uh, again from Lagrangian. Lagrangian we have with this p theta. Here also in place of theta dot, you have to write p theta. And finally, simplifying, we get two. Okay. Because in this theta dot p theta by ml square minus l minus Lagrangian quantum half ml square theta dot square. So one minus half is equal to half. So for that reason, the half. So it is the Hamiltonian. So how you calculate Hamiltonian for Lagrangian? You write the formula, then use this relation p theta del by theta. Then we calculate theta dot and replace all theta dot uh, by p theta. Then our question is to calculate theta theta dot Poisson bracket or theta dot is equal to p theta by ml square. So theta p theta Poisson bracket is equal to 1 to 1 by ml square only. Then another bracket is called Lagrange bracket. We generally use uh, curly bracket for Lagrange bracket. Lagrange bracket of two functions can be defined as uh, in this way. Uh, reverse. In Poisson bracket del u by del q into del, del v by del pi. But here del q by del u, del p by del v and minus in Poisson bracket del, del u by del p, del v by del q, here reverse del p by del u, del q by del v so that if the two product is multiplied it actually give you identity so Lagrange bracket is just uh, reverse of the um, Poisson bracket a property are same u v minus v u q j v 0, q 0, q j v 0, delta i j a fundamental Lagrange bracket are also invariant in canonical transformation. Uh, so if we, and, you know, small qp goes to capital Q, Q then capital qp Lagrange bracket also one if it is a canonical transformation. 
then there is a proof of, so that some of this lagrange bracket into poisson bracket is equal to delta ij okay if u l is a function of one l is equal to 1 to 2n from a set of 2n independent functions uh, for that you have to calculate by definition poisson bracket as a lagrange bracket then poisson bracket definition then multiply is done this with this this with this this with this this with this there are four terms multiple term and individually you can calculate uh, each one first term actually first term is this um, by it okay here l is equal to 1 to 2n k 1 to n m is equal to 1 to n so separate only l term where l are present then take it one and the other two then simplifying del q by del ul into del ul del q means it is cancelled del q k by del q m one del q k by del q m okay mm. and this value will be delta k m if k equal to m it will be one otherwise zero where will delta k m and delta k m means all k must be equal to m so here is k you have to make it a m or m make to k i make it k so this term is like this del p k by del u i l u j by del p k similarly first term just like fourth term is similar and fourth term is similar you get and del u j by del q k del q k by del u y second term you same thing uh, and here you got del q k by del p m which is zero two y p is always zero whatever is same or not Similarly, here del p k by del q this term is equal to zero. So finally, we got to have two term non zero term u j by p k p k by u j u j by q k q k by u i. Okay, so it is nothing but you can say if u j is a function of q k p k, then it is del u j by del u i. That's the same function. If i is equal to one, i is not equal to zero. Delta i. So this is true. Important question. Another is using Poisson bracket so that if Q i is cyclic, then P i is a constant of motion. From Poisson bracket notation, we have known that d u by d t is equal to this. So if u is a constant of motion and d u by d t is zero, if u does not contain time explicitly, then P i is a constant of motion means constant of motion means this zero. If it does not contain explicit time, then P i Poisson bracket zero. So if Q is cyclic, if cyclic means Q A does not appear in the Hamiltonian, del H by del Q A zero. So by definition, in here you put del H by del Q A zero, this term zero, and here del H by del P A, del P A by del Q A zero, so whole zero. Similarly, you can so P A is zero. Another problem is the Poisson bracket of Q P is equal to minus one. Then find the Poisson bracket of X square P plus P. So use the formula x square p p. Again, the formula it will be Poisson bracket x square p plus p p. Now p p same function Poisson bracket zero. So only x square p. Use the identity plus x square p is equal to x into x x into x. So it is x into x p plus x into x p. P p zero already. Oh, it extra term is okay. So x p is equal to minus one given question, so it will be minus two x. Okay. Another problem is uh, you have to do this problem. Oh. These are two three problems. If the coordinate of uh, canonical momentum, then which one is canonical? You have to check which one satisfies this. Then a possible Lagrangian for a free particle. Which of the following is a represent a free particle? Free particle means what? The potential energy is zero. Which of the following represent a free particle? Huh. Um, for that free particle potential zero means the net act, force acting on it is zero. Particle is free. There is no force, no outside force on it. Okay, we have to prove this. Huh? Is a problem. Okay. Any doubt? These are the problems you can check. Hello? 
Okay. We have already covered more than two plus or three units. Okay. Uh, I think I will stop here. Okay. Till we have twenty-five yes, minutes. Sir. If any doubt, you can ask. Are everything clear? Mm, sir, what exactly you mean by the cyclic or non-cyclic? Cyclic cone and uh, Lagrangian does not contain that coordinate. Lagrangian is a kinetic energy minus potential energy. Actually, uh, coordinates are appears in potential energy particularly. Kinetic energy contains velocity coordinates, velocity q dots, and uh, potential energy contains the coordinates. If some coordinate does not appear in the Lagrangian, or the V does not contain any coordinate, then we call it a cyclic coordinate. So Lagrangian, okay. Suppose in Kepler's problem, we see there is no R. Uh, only uh, theta, theta is cyclic. For a simple pendulum, we see only R. R is a cyclic coordinate. Because for simple pendulum, it will be MGL 1 minus cos theta potential energy. For a um, Kepler's problem, potential energy is K by R. No theta there, so theta is cyclic. Uh, sir, but you told Lagrangian is non cyclic and Hamiltonian non -cyclic is. Lagrangian non cyclic means uh, which coordinate uh, is not cyclic. For Hamiltonian formulation, we have many coordinates. Suppose here I can say uh, R is non cyclic coordinate. The theta is. Cyclic coordinate. So total Lagrangian contain theta and R. So theta is absent. So the, for that I have a non-cyclic coordinate. When we go to Routh's procedure or Routhian, Routhian is a function of Hamiltonian of uh, cyclic coordinate minus Lagrangian of non-cyclic coordinate. Because in Lagrangian only cyclic coordinate is already absent. Okay. Cyclic coordinate does not appear in the Lagrangian or in the Hamiltonian. So obviously, whatever coordinate in Lagrangian is non-cyclic. A non-cyclic coordinate with form a Lagrangian formulation is uh, obeyed. For cyclic coordinate, Hamiltonian formulation is followed. For, Fine, sir, sir uh, uh, what do you mean by the generalized coordinate, sir? Like I saw, I read somewhere. The coordinate uh, number of degree of freedom minus the constraint that is known as generalized yeah, coordinate. Generalized coordinate is uh, any coordinate. You can see no uh, general particle, the coordinates which is uh, may or may not Cartesian coordinate. Any coordinate, it may be polar, spherical polar, these are called generalized coordinate. Any coordinate system. Normally we call coordinate with Cartesian coordinate, XYZ. But any coordinates under general coordinates, every coordinate system comes under generalized coordinates. The name is general means non Cartesian, but it also includes Cartesian coordinates. Polar, spherical, all are general coordinates. But here, however, we count the generalized coordinates uh, after uh, uh, the number of degree of freedom. We set uh, a set of coordinates to tally with the number of degree of freedom. Means number of degree of freedom independent, so independent coordinates. Uh, suppose for a uh, diatomic molecule, for example, in diatomic molecule, two atoms are uh, always attached with a how attached by length or anything. You can say which is fixed. So for degree of freedom of diatomic molecule, not six, only five. For one particle three, you have two, so it will be six. But since they are connected, only five degree of freedom. So we need only five generalized coordinate to solve the problem, not six. But if you take six, you can x1, x1, y1, z1, x2, y2, z2. But the, here six Cartesian coordinate. But they are not generalized coordinate because we have only five independent coordinates are required. Generalized means are independent coordinates and tally with the degree of freedom. So we set five among the six, we choose any five which can uh, satisfy the motion and they are called the generalized coordinate. Maybe Cartesian, maybe polar, maybe spherical polar. Sir, we will have four period for MPH six, na? As it is having two. Four period means period two hours. Yeah, yeah, yes, sir. Yes. Hmm.
sir invariant what do you mean by invariant invariant means does not vary remains constant that quantity is a x is invariant or u is invariant means u is a constant it does not vary with any variable or time or du by dt is equal to 0 or del u by del t is equal to 0 okay invariant means conserved quantity it is a constant quantity Good afternoon, sir. Huh. Uh, uh, sir, uh, um, sir, as I cannot join uh, in time, sir, can I get the pre-recorded lecture? No, oh, there is no recorded thing, but I can um, give you these uh, materials. I can send in your group. You can check. Okay, sir. Sir, uh, uh, sir, can can uh, later on can we ask uh, doubt uh, anyway, sir? You can ask me. Uh, sir, by which media? In uh, WhatsApp, or uh, uh, we we have to mail you, or in any other media? Then contact with WhatsApp. I am also in the group. Can make a group. I am there. Any other questions? Hello. <laughs> Sir, only when we will read and cover this, uh, more doubts will come. Now, okay. we are just getting the things. <laughs> no doubt means uh, it doesn't mean we have understood everything. <laughs> no doubt means uh, we have not covered that properly. Actually, this is a two-month course, but we have yes. uh, discussed today. I take two months to discuss it in my class. So, yes, yes. I understand the problem okay. sir uh, conservative and huh. st stationary that how uh, actually will differentiate stationary means at rest okay and conservative stationary they are not moving okay and conservative, but conservative means uh, uh, it has a constant value everywhere stationary we call in case of motion okay stationary it is rest so st sometimes we say sir stationary but, uh, conservative is different thing it has a constant value throughout the region okay uh, sometimes we say stationary waves so then a stationary wave means that's a stationary wave that wave does not carry energy why call it a stationary wave actually wave by definition it carry transfer energy but stationary wave does not transfer any energy so that reason we call it stationary Wave when we propagate it transfer energy from one point to another, but stationary wave does not transfer any energy. For that, we call it stationary wave. Thank you, sir. Okay, any other doubt? Okay. Okay, shall we stop here? Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay, okay. Yes, sir. Thank you so much. Sir, uh, 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 can you give your personal phone number? I have some doubt in before class. In a group, uh, you add in what? No, phone number is there. Okay. How you add me? No. <laughs> okay. Oh, okay. 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 Thank you. Okay. 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 Please share today's notice in the group. Ah, yes, yes, yes. I will send with that official group. Thank you, thank you, sir. Okay, okay, thank you.